We just bought this basically new five axis UMC 500 for about 50% of what it should have cost. That sounds great until you find out what we actually spent on it. So I'll cut to the chase and tell you what I paid for it. So this machine was $104,000. There's a decent amount of other costs that came into that. It is a 2022. It has 244 cut time hours. It's very lightly used. It does have a 30 tool changer. Some of the other prices and costs of buying a machine like this, we've got rigging at the origin, which was accidentally forgotten in my initial um, quotes from Selway, it was $1,800. So it had to come, because it wasn't leaving Haas's factory. It had to be rigged out of the university that this is in. To transport it here, uh, it was a quote of $2,448, but unfortunately that was low by almost a third and it ended up $3,404. To rig it into, from the truck outside, into our shop, it took basically exactly two hours, $3,821, three guys total. So to move, just moving the machine around, total $9,025. Electrical turned out to be a little bit better than I thought. We ran three phase wiring, it was $1,460. Another weird thing, kind of calibrate a five axis machine, you need something called a MZRP probe. So it's like a little ball and a stick and you measure it with a probe as the table does stuff. And that usually comes with every five axis. Unfortunately, didn't come with this machine, so it's a $550 cost coolant five gallons of coolant two hundred dollars has not been done yet gonna do it soon it took us a long time to clean this out wanted to get it in a really good state to not toxify our new coolant so in 2024 i went to imts to look into how we modernize our shop where we have a cnc router and a three axis ycm mill and both of them are getting to be pretty dated and i'm just feeling like i'm a little bit behind and needing to find ways we can be more efficient as a two person shop. Coming back to an idea of a five axis, it just, even in like a three plus two setup, it's a lot better than what we have now. The control is a big, big upgrade. I just happened to find this one on the use section of Haas's website. It is from a university that didn't really use it all that much. And it only has about 240 hours of runtime. I wanted to go through the cost to land it, get it in our door and start using it. Because being that it's a used machine, financing is a little bit trickier. So we had a decent amount of Cat40 tooling and we're basically trying to replace that YCM with this machine and obviously be able to do a lot more with it. So like some people have asked why a UMC 500 and I mean, there's a lot of thoughts to that. I kind of answered some in the first video, but I did do a lot of comparisons between something like a Haas VF2 with a fourth axis, also the fifth axis Trunnion. Just in terms of numbers, the Haas VF2 with a fourth axis currently, 2025 right now, uh, it's about $135,000 with a fourth axis kind of options similarly to this 500 SS. I also got prices on Brother Speedios. I think it was a W1000 with a fourth, which doesn't have a conveyor, was also 135,000. A brand new version of this machine right now is listed for $190,000. A little bit of perspective just for our business. We're a pretty small business. When we first bought our first Shop Saver Pro 408 in 2017, I put it in my garage. We moved out of that quickly. Immediately had work, which was surprising to me. I was thinking I was just gonna make my own woodworking products. And in its time of the five year we had a loan for it, it made us about eight times its original cost, which was $40,000. So there was other revenue and stuff happening at that time, but just a quick estimate. So I'm hoping, right, a $100,000 machine over five years should make us similar amounts of, of return, whether it's products or job shop work. I think that's pretty reasonable. So I, I can't say that's like a standard. That's just what happened for us. Got a bunch of stuff that needs to be opened. I might as well do like a box, classic. But yeah, that's nice and wrinkly. What a chunker. It's kind of shitty. Next, the expensive stuff. So let's see. Start off strong with the, uh... ooh, some swag. Just dropped the knife and caught it. Things are going well. I would say this is a, a requirement for all of our probe capable machines. It's the probe halo. Have one on the YCM. Goes on your probe to protect it from crashing. From Pat at Old Boys. That's where my shitty scissors went. See how good the old Lang packs their stuff. Pretty good, can't get it out. This was 
they called it a shelf unit, which was basically a demo unit. You get like 5% off of laying stuff sometimes if they have demo units. So what's funny about this is I got 5% off this item, but there was 7.5% tariff, so you win some. It's a weird thing to start with, but holy. I mean, this knife is not sharp. It's greasy, I like it. So you put this plate to dial it in on top of the table. You probe this, you probe this, and that gets you some indicating marks. There's interesting, it's already stamped too. That looks through. Oh, by the way, going through prices, this is $798 minus 5% plus 7.5%, 815. Next, we'll go with this guy, and I'm excited. I've waited weeks for this. This came before the mill came. It was, it was for me, the big purchase, work holding wise. Kind of the Lego base. Ooh, we got, we get swag. Looks up for that's, I need tables in here real bad. Goes on the platter, I'm gonna drop. Jesus, that, I think it was like 58 pounds. Ugh. Can actuate from this side, one torque wrench, and all of the holes pull down at once. So I can do two different setups of two different vices, or one big vice, or one in the center, one on the side. But you put it on and kind of leave it. $3,582 for that guy, which is slightly less than the rigging. This goes in those holes. I think I've seen one laying vice outside of a show in person. Uh, then we did, just got some extra pole studs for different things, fixtures. <laughs> These are $72 a set, I believe. Dion Jin, self-centering vice, about $400 from eBay. It's a knockoff of a laying vice that should cost roughly $1,600. And my theory with getting the cheap Chinese version is, hey, these things look amazing, Amish. But SS CAD Cam recommended these and he uses these in his big boy DMG. So good enough for him, good enough for me. I figure if I'm gonna crash, crash is a strong word, accidentally cut into a vice, I wanna do a $400 vice, not a $1,600 vice. Well, I'm learning, so this is my training wheels of a vice. I, I mean, I struggled, I don't even film it. I struggled enough just trying to put a tool into the spindle. You would think pushing the button on the front would just unlock it, but. Hmm. I didn't work. It feels like a little bit like a blanket inside of this thing. So where does that leave us? We have spent $129,000. Obviously a good chunk of that went on a loan and I had a 6.9% interest on loan, which was pretty good. It's a simple interest loan. So that's a little different than a financing agreement, which has a lot of tricks to it. It's kind of a mess I've learned over the years. Read and give your loans loan agreements to something like Claude or GPT to have them analyze them. I found a bunch of stuff in there. It's kind of nasty and it was good to have it help me understand it. It's kind of like a consultant in that way. So out of pocket, $11,365, not accounting for the five to $600 of miscellaneous like floor mats and cleaning materials, weird pumps for this, you know, it's at least 600 additional dollars right now. It's things we're gonna need. Additionally, we are in the process of selling another machine, but we have some tooling I brought over from that other machine. And then we need a pre-filter because the sump filter just kind of lets through too much stuff. And once it gets past the screen, it goes up into that guy, which is terrible. We're gonna get like a better, I'll put up an image here of this pre-filter that Nick from P3D recommends. That cost is $727. And then the sump filter screen and panel, don't have it yet, but we're getting a Swarf sump filter, which is amazing, and a panel that's roughly $950. And then, to, like I said, tooling, kind of estimate 250 up to $500 per tool, depending on what. I need to buy a bunch of tools for steel. We only pretty much have tools for aluminum right now. The wise John Saunders, I was watching back some of his videos and asking friends going through purchasing this and like what to look for in loans and I'll link it below. But if you can get them out of the loan, which some of the stuff I couldn't, I did get no prepayment penalties, which is great. The weird things that I couldn't remove was adverse change. I'm not gonna be able to explain these well because they're very legally easy. And then there was another one called COJ and both of those combined basically give the bank lender incredible rights to basically waive my rights as, you know, they're in a different state. So it basically allowed them to say, 
Well, this is where we're doing all the legal proceedings and adverse change basically means without any warning, they can just reclaim the loan and they, they don't have to tell me about it. I, don't, I can't remember if COJ or adverse changes that, you know, they don't have to have a reason. They can recall the loan and make it be due right away. Just things that if you can get them out, you can negotiate a lot on a loan. Like I literally said in some of these cases, which was true that I had gotten certain interest rates on loans, the next person to quote me would give me a similar rate. In this market, I thought 6.9 was a pretty good rate. And you can put a lot of these soft costs, a lot of banks, a lot of lenders will let you put between 10, the, the most I saw was 25%. And the applications I was asking for, so the, if the machine's $104,000, obviously changes based on your credit and your bank and your machine you're buying, used machines pose different problems and the types of machines and how old it is. This is basically considered a new machine based on its age, which was nice. But things like work holding and our electrical work and the rigging, I mean, you can play it pretty fast and loose, but you have to provide receipts or have the bank buy it for you. Um, in this case, uh, Selway put some of this fixturing on the invoice and then that basically just gets passed through to the bank when it was invoiced. I think we're gonna do a lot of great stuff with a five axis machine like this that I got it for basically half price because a lot of these costs, the ex extra costs, the rigging, the electrical, all these soft costs as you call them, they end up being the same. When you buy a new machine, we couldn't have afforded the payments for a new machine. I was looking at, or a new five axis that is, I was looking at this kind of 100 to $130,000 price range. And I know that a UMC 500 has its downsides. I know a used machine has its downsides. It was tougher to get financing. It's t all these things are much harder when you're buying a used machine potentially, but it's in a lot of ways it's new. Would I rather have a VF2 with a fourth or a fifth axis add-on? The price was higher for both a Speedio and a VF2. Those $135,000 prices don't include like a fifth axis, right? And I have a fifth axis and a lot of options for automation, which you could probably get with those other machines. I probably haven't answered all the questions or the critics, but for us, it feels like an amazing upgrade. I hope this was helpful. I would have loved to see some of this kind of transparency. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'm also going to share our spreadsheet, how I calculated a lot of this. Some of it's borrowed from John Saunders. So thanks to him in the first place for sharing so much of this. There'll be more in the series with the machine running very shortly. So make sure and subscribe.